David Haller is the offspring of Professor Charles Xavier and Gabrielle Haller. He experiences dissociative identity disorder, previously known as multiple personality disorder, which developed following the death of his godfather, Daniel Shomron. This initially resulted in the emergence of three alternate personalities, each possessing a unique psychic ability. One had telekinetic abilities, another had telepathic abilities, and the third was capable of controlling fire. Over time, the number of these personalities has grown to potentially thousands, each endowed with a distinct power. Decades ago, Charles and Gabrielle Haller, his mother, engaged in a romantic relationship in Israel, and Charles departed from Israel unaware that Haller was expecting his child. Haller kept the identity of David's father a secret, and it was only later, after the establishment of the New Mutants, that Charles came to know he was David's father. While David resided in Paris with his mother, a member of the Israeli diplomatic service, their home was stormed by a terrorist group intent on eliminating Israelis. During this attack, David witnessed the murder of his godfather. The shock triggered David's dormant psionic abilities, leading him to annihilate the terrorists by burning their brains. In the process, David inadvertently made telepathic connections with each assailant, absorbing their final thoughts and emotions. This exposure to such intense horror left David, a naturally gentle and loving person, in a catatonic state. The psyche of the terrorist's leader, Jamel Karami, became integrated into David's mind. As Karami's consciousness intertwined with David's, it took years for Karami to differentiate his identity from that of his unintended host. Although Karami eventually re-established his individuality, he remained confined within David's psyche. During this time, Karami learned to manipulate David's telepathic abilities to probe David's thoughts, discovering his inherent innocence and kindness. Karami also explored the minds of Gabrielle Haller and others, gaining a deeper insight into their lives, which motivated him to attempt to heal David's fractured mind. He set about the task of reintegrating these identities into David's primary persona, which resembled that of a young child in dire need of parental guidance. Nevertheless, some of these personalities were resistant to Karami's efforts, with two being particularly challenging. Jack Wayne, a bold adult adventurer who wielded David's telekinetic abilities, and Cindy, a fiery, defiant young woman who controlled David's pyrokinetic powers. Wayne was notably aggressive, aiming to obliterate Karami's consciousness to maintain his autonomy within David's psyche. Karami was thus embroiled in a conflict against Wayne and other dissenting altars in a fantastical landscape within David's mind. A bizarre fusion of Paris, echoing David's childhood recollections, and Beirut, from Karami's own memories. By his late teens, David had transitioned from a catatonic state to showing signs of autism, and his mother entrusted him to the care of Dr. Moira McTaggart, a distinguished scientist specializing in mutant research and a long-standing associate of Charles Xavier. In this setting, David's psionic talents began to manifest sporadically in the physical world, leading to the inadvertent absorption of the psyches of two of McTaggart's colleagues, Tom Corsi and Sharon Friedlander. Dr. McTaggart then called upon Xavier to come to her research facility on Muir Island, off the coast of Scotland, accompanied by various members of the New Mutants, including Cypher, Mirage, and Wolfsbane. During this period, David inadvertently incorporated the consciousnesses, or astral selves, of McTaggart and Wolfsbane into his own mind. Xavier, in an attempt to understand David's psyche, ventured into it with Mirage's astral form for support. Subsequently, the astral selves of Cypher and Gabrielle Haller were absorbed into David's mind, followed by those of Xavier and Mirage. It was shortly before Xavier entered David's mind that he discovered David was his son and that the various personalities within him referred to themselves collectively as Legion. Each consciousness that Legion had recently captured maintained its own independent existence within David's mind. These newly absorbed minds found themselves allying with Wayne and Cindy against Karami, misled by Wayne about Karami's real intentions. However, Mirage intervened before Wayne could destroy Karami, who explained to her and Gabriel Haller his intentions to aid David. Working alongside a hesitant Wayne, Mirage and Karami successfully restored David's mind to almost normal function and then returned the external consciousnesses, including Mirage's own, to their respective bodies. Since Karami's body was no longer alive, he continued to reside within David's psyche. Despite these efforts, Karami could not merge the personalities of Wayne and Cindy into David's central persona, leaving them as distinct identities within David's mind. Wayne, Cindy, and even Karami occasionally communicated with the outside world through David. However, David was no longer autistic, 
with his primary personality now dominating his mental and physical functions. This primary persona of David remained that of a 10-year-old boy, the same as before his initial trauma. Later, a critical incident threatened the lives of Wolfsbane and Moira, but David used his telekinetic abilities to save them. This act, however, allowed Jack Wayne to seize control of David's body and flee to Scotland for self-indulgence. The New Mutants pursued and confronted him. Jack coerced Cindy into assisting him. Despite her reluctance to be anyone's puppet and her desire for freedom, she disliked the prospect of confinement. Sunspot then had magic transport him and Legion to Limbo, threatening Jack with removal and destruction unless he relinquished control. Jack subsequently withdrew into David's subconscious, enabling David to regain dominance. Several months later, Muir Island faced an assault by Donald Pierce and his Reavers, part of their relentless pursuit of Wolverine and his allies. At the time, David was in the nursery, interacting with Sunder and the Warpies, who had found refuge on the island as it became a sanctuary for those displaced. During the attack, David used his telekinetic powers in an attempt to shield his friends, but this action inadvertently allowed Jack Wayne to surface in his mind. Gaining control, Wayne maliciously altered the telekinetic barrier to protect only himself, exposing Sunder to enemy fire. Throughout the skirmish, Jack and Cindy indulged in chaos, heedless of the repercussions, even as Freedom Force arrived to counter the Reavers. Cindy inadvertently sealed Stonewall's fate by extinguishing Pyro's fire at a critical moment. Concurrently, under the influence of the Shadow King, Legion attacked the aged seer, Destiny, who had preemptively sensed his approach and had sent her guardian, Forge, to safety. Legion delved into Destiny's mind and encountered visions of his own murky future. Overwhelmed by panic, Legion unleashed a telepathic assault, fatally striking Destiny before she could reveal more. Legion's role in the day's calamities went unnoticed. The strengthened security on the island and the pervasive negative emotional field created by Lorna Dane's emerging powers obscured any perception of his erratic behavior. Jack Wayne took full command of David's powers and form, opting to entertain himself at the expense of the island's residents. His first act was to confine Polaris in the mutant ex-detention cell, given that she was immune to her own negativity power and might uncover his true identity. While impersonating David Haller, Jack allowed himself to be part of an experiment by Forge, intended to trace the missing X-Men using a Cerebro unit. Regrettably, their telepathic search inadvertently connected them to the Shadow King. For reasons unknown, the Shadow King relinquished his grip on the island when both the New Warriors and X-Force arrived at Muir Island. In a desperate move, Legion attempted to recapture Proteus's energy from piecemeal. However, piecemeal's intense suffering resonated through Legion's mind, causing him to lose control of his telekinetic barriers. The situation deteriorated when Proteus's energy overwhelmed piecemeal, leading to a rebirth of sorts for McTaggart, who then exiled the heroes to a void-like dimension. X-Factor, unsuccessful in their efforts to stop Proteus and secure Edinburgh, were likewise exiled. During the conflict, Jean Grey tapped into Proteus's consciousness. Utilizing the telepathic abilities of Legion, she conveyed Proteus's thoughts to the others, illustrating the serenity he experienced in his formless state and his intentions to instill similar tranquility in Edinburgh. Unfortunately, the assembled heroes had to persuade Proteus that the happiness he sought in life could not match what he had found in death, leading Proteus to choose to perish once again. Following their return to Muir Island, the Shadow King manipulated Polaris, who was held captive by Jack Wayne, using her as a conduit for negative energy to extend his control worldwide, bringing the darker aspects of humanity to the forefront. The X-Men, newly returned from space with Professor X, tried to sneak onto the island but were quickly detected. Legion personally encountered Storm. While David Haller resisted the Shadow King's orders, Jack Wayne eagerly executed Farouk's commands. The negative energy enabled Wayne to harness all of Legion's abilities, and he overpowered Storm using a mix of telepathic, telekinetic, and pyrokinetic forces. Following the demise of his primary vessel, the Shadow King inhabited Legion and exploited his vast powers to launch a catastrophic assault that devastated much of Muir Island. Employing David's body, the Shadow King taunted Professor X, pretending to corrupt David while disclosing that he had merely granted David self-control by mending his fragmented psyche, a change David relished. After sustaining injuries from Storm, David's body needed time to recuperate, prompting the Shadow King to withdraw. Once the Shadow King was ultimately expelled from David's mind, David was left in a vegetative state. Professor Xavier, unwilling to give up on his son, frantically searched for any remaining consciousness within David's mind. Faced with no detectable signs of mental activity, 
he sorrowfully conceded that David was lost. David was placed in an intensive care unit in a Tel Aviv hospital, receiving top-notch medical attention in the hope that his cognitive functions might eventually recover. Several months later, inspired by visions of destiny prompting him towards his true purpose, David emerged from his coma with a fully restored mind. For a period, David pretended to be comatose while covertly connecting his telepathic powers to his father's dreams. There, he portrayed Magneto, attempting to persuade his father that eliminating Magneto would fulfill his vision of unity between humans and mutants. Yet, David's efforts were in vain as Xavier rejected the notion that Magneto's demise would advance his ideal. Frustrated, David revealed his true identity and expressed his disagreement to his father. When Mystique arrived intending to kill David for the death of destiny, he abandoned his feigned coma, repelled her with a telekinetic force, and declared that he had anticipated her visit. Mystique escaped, vowing to return, and was chased by X-Factor. Shortly thereafter, Gabrielle Haller was both stunned and ecstatic when David referred to her as his mother, giving her hope that he was finally recovering. However, David collapsed once more and envisioned crafting a tombstone for one of his split personas while experiencing another vision of destiny. When he regained consciousness, he appeared confused, and despite his mother summoning Forge to aid him, David had disappeared. He later intervened in a fight between Mystique, Forge, and Wolfsbane to convey Destiny's message to Mystique. Afterwards, he teleported X-Factor to another location, stating they were needed elsewhere. When Mystique pressed him for explanations, David promised to make it all better before flying off. David then journeyed to the Negev Desert, where he experienced another vision from Destiny, who proclaimed it was his destiny to mend the divide between humans and mutants, thus realizing his father's aspirations. Convinced by the vision, he began constructing a psychic bunker. Gabrielle Haller sought assistance from the X-Men. Fast forward, they attempted to stop Legion, but their attacks had no impact on him. Going back, their attempt to penetrate David's bunker resulted in their Blackbird being trapped in a telekinetic field. David joyfully greeted his step-siblings, presuming they came to support him. Asserting his sanity, Legion instructed the heroes to choose their words carefully. Jean Grey attempted to persuade him that he was not yet fully healed, but David maintained that he was now whole and committed to fulfilling his father's legacy. When Storm further questioned him, David transported her through a time portal to the moment of her parents' death, offering her a chance to save them. Despite her efforts, she was forcefully returned to the present, claiming the experience was mere illusion, though David insisted it was genuine time travel and that she had simply not been quick enough. As Legion's intentions became clear, Storm requested Psylocke to link her mind with Bishop, who had just tried to absorb Legion's energy, pulling them all into the past with David. An alternative future, known as the Age of Apocalypse, emerged when Legion traveled back in time to eliminate Magneto before he could challenge Xavier's vision, but instead accidentally murdered Xavier himself. Bishop, retaining memory of the original timeline, traveled back to the moment Xavier was killed and used Legion's power to create a psionic loop, forcing the young mutant to witness the havoc he had wrought. The intense energy unleashed by this event seemingly caused David's death. With Bishop's intervention, the normal timeline was reinstated. Following Bishop's assault, Legion vanished into a realm known as No Time. In this void, David encountered and integrated the psyches of numerous others, further fracturing his mind to create hundreds of new personas. It was in this state that magic discovered him and managed to communicate with his Legion persona convincing him to return to Earth in exchange for his aid in defeating the Elder Gods and recovering her soul. David reappeared near Westcliff, Colorado, where he met Marcy Sable. She assisted him by providing water and engaging him in games. Tragically, one of Legion's violent personas surfaced during their interaction, resulting in Marcy's death and her psyche being absorbed into Legion's collective mind. Danielle Moonstar and Karma vanished while investigating mutant activities in Colorado. In her efforts to contact Marcy psychically, Karma became entrapped in Legion's psyche. Concurrently, Moonstar was apprehended. Upon hearing of his former teammate's disappearance, Cannonball assembled a rescue group comprising Sunspot, Magic, and Magma. They discovered Karma's unconscious form in a bar's back room. While Magic and Magma located her consciousness within Legion's body, stored inside a metallic container in a house's cellar. As the team confronted Legion's body and his numerous malevolent personas, Magic entered his psyche and eliminated Jack Wayne using her soul sword. They then located Karma and Marcy, and together managed to control David's body by obtaining a Moira doll. Before vacating David's body, 
Karma used the Soul Sword to destroy the persona responsible for Marcy's death. Once on Utopia, the X Club, along with Rogue and Danger, commenced the meticulous process of restoring David's psyche by methodically identifying and confining each altar. Following General Ulysses' return from Limbo with the Soul Gems and his subsequent release of the Elder Gods, Magic executed her strategy. She dispatched Karma, now armed with the Soul Sword, into Legion's mind, liberating his reality-altering persona. Legion fulfilled their agreement by utilizing his powers to permanently eradicate the Elder Gods. Amid Bastion's onslaught on the X-Men, Cyclops enlisted Professor X to recruit Legion for the conflict. Despite his reservations, Professor X complied, enabling Legion to deploy his array of abilities to combat the Nimrod Sentinels alongside the X-Men. Shortly thereafter, Dr. Nemesis commenced the elimination of Legion's altars, apparently without causing any detrimental outcomes. However, unknown to Nemesis, Legion's psyche generated a formidable new altar designed for self-protection. This altar utilized its reality-altering powers to construct a universe where David was celebrated as a hero. Eventually, David realized this world was an illusion of his own making. He reabsorbed the rogue altar and used its abilities to revert reality to its prior state. Following the reset of reality, several of David's personas escaped in physical form. Legion, alongside a select group of X-Men, pursued these rogue personas. During the capture of the final one, he inadvertently absorbed Rogue. Releasing her caused a severe neurological shock that left him comatose. David eventually emerged from his coma and was seen with his father on the beaches of Ibiza, Spain. Like many other psychics, he experienced severe pain upon the arrival of the Phoenix seeking its host. Upon recovery, Professor Xavier dispatched Legion to a spiritual commune in the Himalayas. Under the tutelage of Mirza the Mystic, David achieved greater mastery over his powers and personas. This stability unraveled with the psychic turmoil following his father's death, which disrupted his internal control and led to the destruction of the commune. As his various altars vied for dominance, David retreated deeper into his psyche. He was rescued by an enigmatic figure, gaining time to overpower a rogue persona and claim its telepathic power. Probing the mind of his rescuer, David uncovered a deep-seated animosity towards mutants and learned of two imprisoned mutant twins in Japan, just before the figure vanished. In Japan, David found the twins, Karasu Teng and Sojobo Tengu, who were not hostages but successors to Ogun, a Yakuza leader and enemy of Wolverine. Although initially captured, David persuaded the twins of his peaceful intentions and offered them liberation from their father's burdensome legacy. The twins agreed to join him, but the X-Men intervened misled by the mysterious stranger into believing David posed a threat. A skirmish ensued, and recognizing the risk to the twins, David entrusted them to the X-Men's care. Determined to preempt threats to mutants, unlike his father and the X-Men's reactive approach, David resolved to use his powers proactively. His burgeoning confidence enhanced his control, allowing him to subdue stronger personas. During a confrontation with the X-Men, David's mind was invaded by Blindfold who declared herself his nemesis before being expelled by one of his personas after a kiss. Driven to understand more about Blindfold, David ventured to the Jean Grey School. There, he discovered the stranger who had helped him was Blindfold's brother, Luca Aldean, who had appropriated some of her powers to manipulate David. Luca foresaw David causing the end of mutants and had also manipulated events to attempt to kill his sister. David thwarted Luca's plot, saving Blindfold. Despite the X-Men's invitation to stay, David, still at odds with their methods, chose to leave. The rogue persona that had expelled Blindfold and briefly taken control during the confrontation with Luca emerged, adopting the guise of David's father, Charles Xavier. David would from then on call this altar the Fiend. In his quest to support mutant kind, David pursued the journals of Luca Aldine, which contained prophetic visions about how David would lead to the extinction of mutants. He located the group responsible for turning Luca against mutants and framed them by summoning a pack of dire wraiths to create a diversion while infiltrating the Jean Grey school. He concealed the recovery of Luca's journal from Blindfold, despite their growing romantic connection. Later, he assisted a new mutant whose ability was to claim credit for the achievements of others, guiding him towards a path of fulfillment. Despite his benevolent actions for mutants in the world, David struggled with trust issues. The revelations in Luca's journals made him aware of a threat from Arcus, a deranged guardian of Earth intent on eradicating mutants. During a date with Blindfold on the Moon near Arcus's base, David confessed to her that he had telepathically induced a coma in Arcus 
during an argument about the ethics of his actions. He then asked Ruth to deliver Arcus to the X-Men, hoping they could restore his mind. After enlisting Pete Wisdom to help combat anti-mutant sentiments in the UK, Wisdom had David arrested and handed over to his mother, Gabriel Haller. Initially angry at her for his perceived abandonment, David reconciled with her just moments before she was fatally shot by an assassin targeting him. In response, David killed the anti-mutant tyrant responsible and his bodyguard. To expose and neutralize Luca, David deceived Cyclops and the X-Men into believing he was targeting Cyclops to avenge his father. The ruse led Luca to believe the predicted end of mutant kind was imminent, enabling David to subdue him. However, David's lack of transparency led the X-Men to see him as unstable and dangerous. Emma Frost and the Cuckoos then implanted a telepathic virus in David's mind as a contingency, which severely damaged his psyche when activated, misunderstanding his intentions. This breach allowed the Fiend to escape and possess Luca Aldean's body, subsequently causing chaos on the astral plane by amplifying human hatred, a threat unnoticed by most heroes, but with potentially catastrophic consequences. David survived the telepathic attack and was taken into custody by sword under Commander Abigail Brand. With the aid of a rehabilitated Arcus and Kara Sutengu, they created a scenario within David's psyche that enabled him to regain and reintegrate control over his alter personas. Acknowledging that his paranoia and mistrust had hindered him, David gradually started to reintegrate his personas peacefully, amassing power to confront the Fiend. Despite his formidable abilities, David was unable to defeat the Fiend alone. He subconsciously summoned the X-Men and other allies who had supported him in his endeavors. They collectively thwarted a nuclear strike planned by the Fiend, ultimately subduing him, leading to their merger. The fusion with the Fiend momentarily overwhelmed David, triggering a crisis where he began absorbing all mutants on Earth into a destructive entity. However, inspired by Ruth's love, David reconciled with his turbulent past, merging with his last alter, the Weaver, who possessed reality-warping abilities. Fully empowered, David used his godlike abilities to reverse the apocalyptic events he had initiated, attempting to amend his past actions while preserving the positive outcomes. Ultimately, he erased himself from reality, leaving Ruth as the sole individual who remembered him. Though initially his memory faded from others, it eventually resurfaced, and ultimately, so did David himself. Following his reappearance, one of David's personalities, Lord Trauma, attempted to dominate his mind after David was discovered by an Amish couple and hospitalized. David temporarily subdued Lord Trauma and sought out Dr. Hannah Jones, a psychotherapist renowned for her work with celebrities. As David made his way to her, Lord Trauma preemptively contacted Dr. Jones, trying to deter her from treating David and attempting to intimidate her with visual hallucinations. David intervened, pulling her from those horrifying visions and requesting her assistance. Dr. Jones agreed to help David and was quickly drawn into his mind. There, she was attacked by entities dispatched by Lord Trauma and encountered Tammy Har, another persona of David's. Tammy guided her away from the threats through the ancient cities, areas representing David's past memories. Dr. Jones observed a memory in which David's anger led a psychiatrist to take his own life. While attempting to aid the younger David, both Hannah and Tammy were expelled from the memory, landing on a nightmarish beach. They navigated past toxic spores that made Hannah ill after she accidentally contacted one. Meanwhile, back in the hospital, Lord Trauma continued to manipulate David, causing him to inadvertently lash out at another patient. This incident led to David being detained by security and triggered a surge of voices in his mindscape, manifesting as an overwhelming windstorm. Legion had a premonition where X-Men and his Horsemen of Salvation launched an assault to realize the X-Men's vision of the world. In response, Legion detained multiple men, using him to create and control numerous duplicates and deployed them globally. The chaos necessitated X-Men intervention. When Jean Grey confronted him, Legion revealed his foresight, but it was already too late as the Horsemen of Salvation began their attack. X-Man, also known as Nate Grey, battled the X-Men and Legion, who then teleported Nate into a fabricated version of his home reality within his subconscious. Nate saw through the deception and seized control of Legion, using his powers to attempt the elimination of the X-Men. Convinced that no improvement could occur with the X-Men's presence, Nate made all the X-Men at the scene, including Legion, vanish, leaving himself alone and unconscious. Legion and the disappeared X-Men were transported to an alternate reality crafted by Nate, aimed at establishing a utopian world where all mutants coexisted peacefully. The memories of the displaced mutants were erased to ensure their compliance in this new reality. 
Legion was confined in the Danger Room prison complex as its most perilous inmate. Due to his capabilities, he was kept in solitary confinement and denied interaction with others. He was the mastermind behind altering the memories of other prisoners and had significant control over the prison's operations. Bishop, also isolated in solitary confinement, encountered Legion and accused him of insanity, stating this situation was extreme even for David. Legion was eventually liberated by Nate, who allowed him to leave the alternate reality after deciding to free the mutants he had detained there. Following the creation of the mutant homeland Krakoa, David was apprehended by the anti-mutant group Orcus, who extracted his brain to generate multiple potential scenarios for undermining Krakoa. Existing in an astral form, he contacted Nightcrawler. In exchange for assisting Kurt in removing a troubling psionic implant, Kurt enlisted Pixie and Dr. Nemesis to eliminate David's physical brain. After his demise by Kurt's actions, David was resurrected on Krakoa, where his emergence sent ripples of emotion and power across the island. Concerned that David could not manage his abilities and might threaten the island, his father opted not to reintegrate his mind with his body. Defying expectations, David autonomously entered his new body, renouncing his father's justifications and Magneto's recruitment efforts, citing the pervasive secrets on the island as his reason for distrust. David subsequently approached Kurt, proposing to aid him in uncovering the hidden truths and enigmas of Krakoa, and disclosed that the Patchwork Man, a psychic menace on the island, was Onslaught. Following the Hellfire Gala, he collaborated with Scarlet Witch and Proteus in a clandestine ritual designed to bend time, enabling Cerebro to archive the minds of mutants who perished before its activation, as well as potential mutants who died prior to their X-gene manifesting. Despite his controlled personas post-resurrection, Legion enlisted Zorn and Zorn to monitor him, prepared to obliterate his mind should he lose control again. When Loa and Mercury approached him to facilitate mental intimacy, reminiscent of his interactions with Blindfold, he saw it as an opportunity to ensnare Onslaught. He allowed Onslaught to enter the mental amalgamation, but was unable to hold him, leading to Onslaught's escape to Stacy X's orphanage, where he instigated a conflict between Lost and Fabian Cortez. David accompanied the twins to a meeting with his father at the Green Lagoon, where tensions ran high. David expressed his love for his father, but refrained from disclosing his recent efforts to thwart Onslaught. The situation escalated when Onslaught took control of everyone in the bar and attempted an attack, prompting David and the twins to eliminate everyone present to escape. David then traveled to planet Arako to better harness his abilities and collaborated with Nightcrawler to prevent Onslaught from annihilating the planet. Within his mind, Legion established a unique pocket dimension called the Altar, situated at the edge of the astral plane and accessible via a Krakoan gate on Arako. This non-Euclidean psychic space served as a strategic meeting point for Legion and Nightcrawler to devise their plans against Onslaught. Amidst the chaos, Onslaught incited the Krakoans to throw a grand party known as the Crucible, aiming for a catastrophic ending where attendees would slaughter each other without hope of resurrection, utilizing Xavier to erase all mental backups. To counteract this, Kurt enlisted the help of Cortez, Lost, Stacy X, Gorgon, Pixie, and Dust in the altar. Their initial step involved unraveling how Onslaught had infiltrated the island. The strategy included dispatching Pixie and Dr. Nemesis to liberate the crowd from Onslaught's influence using her soul sword and his Krakoan drugs. Concurrently, the rest worked to detach Onslaught from its anchor within Lost's mind by addressing her resentment towards Cortez. Once free from Onslaught's dominion, the entity possessed Magneto and Xavier to form a physical manifestation, but was ultimately vanquished by Dust, who harnessed the collective consciousness of all mutants in the altar channeling it through the grains of an Araki sandstorm. Legion stayed on Arako, managing the altar with the Zorn twins, turning it into a key feature on Krakoa. Nightcrawler utilized this space to promote his ideology of the Spark, and later established it as the headquarters for a Krakoa peacekeeping force known as the Legionaries. David was joyfully reunited with his cherished blindfold after Krakoa lifted the ban on resurrecting precogs, she chose to forsake her physical existence to join him as an astral entity within the altar. Though David spent much time in meditation on Arako, he and Ruth were interrupted by a vision of Magus being killed by Nimrod, prompting David to disrupt a council meeting to inform his son Warlock. Later, within the altar, David and Ruth encountered the enigmatic Mother Righteous, who presented them with visions of possible futures and current events involving Loki. She proposed a pact offering David greater power in exchange for his devotion. After discussing the offer with Ruth, who assured her love regardless of his decision, David remained ambivalent about accepting the deal. 
After Orcus launched an attack on Krakoa, it was revealed that Legion had survived. He manifested as diminutive demon bombs to support Nightcrawler in combating Orcus and played a crucial role in rescuing their allies Feral, Fatal, and the duo of Cloak and Dagger along with Warlock, 